I figured out my dad cheated on my mom decades ago with the woman he is currently partnered with. Between 2011 and 2014, my mom had cancer. She passed near the end of 2014. I was 24 years old at the time. Around 2013, I found two nude photos on my dad's computer. One was a woman around his age, which was around 60 years old. I assumed he had figured out how to use a computer for I was grossed out, but realized it made sense, and so I healed. In 2015, in under six months after my mom had passed, he went back to his home country to sort out some of his businesses. He was already dating some woman who he was friends with in his childhood. I suddenly had an intuition that this was the woman from the photos from his computer, but I couldn't remember the face clearly and had no proof anymore. I did try calling him out, but I was wishy-washy and uncertain. I asked about some scantily clad woman on his computer. His response that he kept photos of all of his tenants in the apartments he owns in another country, so it was probably one of those. I confirm he does keep their WhatsApp photos on his computer so he can match faces to emails. So I dropped it, as I had no proof of anything and thought maybe it was Fast forward to now. I'm 33 years old at this point. My dad and the woman have been partners for a decade. I visit and have dinner once a month or so. I needed a cell phone for something and my dad gave me his old one. After a few weeks, I was going through some files left over the phone. I found dressed photos of this woman on the phone. I checked the metadata on the phone and some were from a year or two before my mom passed. So now I know that before my mom died, my dad was getting selfies from his current partner. Suddenly, a puzzle piece clicked too. Something about how she looked reminded me of the nudes on the PC. I still can't be 100% certain the nudes were hers, but it is 100% certain he was involved with her in some way before my mom died. My dad never admits he's wrong. Anytime I've called him out on anything, he denies or puts it on me. So I feel mentioning it to him will just harm me. I've tried discussing this in therapy, but the therapist seems to brush over it. I guess they don't know what to do with it either. To make matters confusing, they both care about me. They have helped me through some very difficult times and have been there for me. So what do I do? Mm. Found out that my wife is tormenting and harassing my ex-wife online. Is this good enough cause for divorce? Absolutely. As the title says, I feel really repulsed by my wife. I looked into her phone and found out that she has been harassing my ex-wife for years, bullying her, calling her all kinds of names. I only saw her fake Facebook and I was curious as to why she had one. So I saw her activities and she had a conversation with my ex. Her account was blocked. I called my ex and she brushed it off as childish behavior that didn't bother her, but I wanted to know everything. After some persuasion, she started crying and she admitted that my wife has been tormenting her. She sent me screenshot after screenshot from fake Facebook and IG accounts harassing my ex. I failed to understand why, so I confronted my wife and at first she denied it. I showed her the screenshots and she said that my ex probably made up the whole thing. At last, I confronted her with her phone with some of her accounts still saved in the login history. She broke down crying, telling me that I never made her feel secure and safe, and that made her resentful. I don't know what to do now. I can't stand looking at her. I've confided in my sister, and she thinks that I'm overreacting. We've been trying for a child, and everything has been great, but I'm just not sure now. Bro, do not stay married to this woman, and you also need to start covering your ass. You need to start recording all conversations. You need to put up hidden cameras. You need to do everything because if this woman is going to dedicate years of her time to inflict pain on somebody, she's 100% going to do something to punish you for leaving her. Y'all, I came to the comment section and OP answered a comment and says that she has 11 Facebook accounts. 11 accounts to torment one person is fucking crazy. That is insane, 11 fucking Facebook accounts and he doesn't know how many Instagram accounts she has like and she's been using these accounts to harass and bully his ex-wife because she didn't feel secure in her marriage that is fucking insane that is crazy okay so I had to read this comment for you guys because it actually made me lol okay they said lawyer up first then you and the lawyer hand her divorce papers and slowly walk away from her backwards never breaking eye contact with her once you're out of sight, run for the hills and trip your lawyer just in case your soon-to-be ex is chasing you and is actually a bear. <laughs> People are so unfucking serious and I'm here for it. <laughs> Story time about how my friends made everyone hate me. So a little background information. I was 15 in a ninth grade. 
and we're going to call my best friend Charlene. Her and I were best friends from sixth grade all the way up till freshman year. Well, when we got into high school, she caught feelings for this sophomore who we're going to call Ben. And when I say she caught feelings for this boy, she was like in love with him. Personally, I didn't like anybody. I just got out of a toxic relationship. So boys were like the last thing on my mind. Well, instead of Ben trying to pursue things with her, he would always try to flirt with me instead. And I would never go along with it because duh, girl code. Well, instead of talking to Ben about this, she would run to all of her other friends and call me a slut for me, quote, letting him flirt with me. Like, girl, I can't control him. The most I can tell him to do is stop. Anyway, so the one day we were waiting for the bus to go home and all of a sudden Ben comes up behind me and gives me a hug and a kiss on the cheek, of course, but still. So I push him off with me because, ew, well, Charlene laughs it off like everything's fine, like for part two about how my friends made everyone hate me. So like I said, Ben comes up behind me, give me a hug and a kiss, and I say, ooh, push him off of me, and then Charlene laughs it off like everything's fine. But then the next day at school, people are telling me about how she was telling everybody that I would force him to kiss me and hang out with me. And of course, everybody believed her and no one believed me, which I'm not going to lie. I feel like in high school, whenever there's a rumor starting, unless you tell your side of the story first, no one's going to believe you. Well, thankfully, he ended up explaining the whole situation to everybody. So once those rumors were laid to rest, she started new rumors that she was going to fight me after school. And I was tired of putting up with the shit. So I ended up beating her ass. And now I'm a senior in high school and thankfully have found amazing supportive friends. As for Charlene, I haven't heard anything about her since and I would like to keep it that way. Because why would you let a boy get in the middle of our friendship? Am I even wrong for not picking up my phone on vacation and leaving my tenant, her mom, and my mom to deal with the cops for a couple of hours? I wrote my business read out to my mom's best friend's daughter, Sally. I knew her growing up and I used to babysit her. The basement has two means of escape other than going into my area. It is fully up to code as an in-law suite. There is no reason for anyone to go through it into my space. I went on vacation and I left my door to the basement dead bolted. Three days into my vacation, I got an alert from my phone that there's an unauthorized event at my house. I look at the video. It's my mom opening the door for Sally's mom. They freak out when the alarm goes off. Usually, if I need my mom to get into my apartment, I'll give her a temporary code. It's always the same one because she always gets confused by tech. But I have to activate it beforehand. I cannot do it retroactively. The only choice would be to call her and give her my personal code. I check the cameras in the house and strangely enough, my house is not on fire. I didn't leave the faucet running. There is no emergency. This is where I might be the a-hole. Once I saw that they were just effing around in my area for no good reason, I put my phone on airplane mode and I went back to the party. Maybe 90 minutes later, a concierge at the resort came and said I was urgently needed on the phone. My dad has written down my whereabouts and they called at the front desk for me. I excused myself and went for the call. I asked my mom what the emergency was, why she was getting me out of my friend's wedding reception, was my house okay, was my dad okay? She very briskly told me to shut up and talk to the cops and the security patrol. I talked to them and apologized for wasting their time. I asked them what the emergency was that brought my mother into the house. They handed her back the phone and let her tell me that her friend did not want to sit in the basement while she was visiting her daughter. So my mom agreed to come let them use my area and it would be a secret. I asked the security company to please lock my house back up and take my key back from my mother. She started to protest, but I hung up. I enjoyed the rest of my trip and my dad has agreed to pay any fines or penalties that come from the false alarm. Sally's mom wants her to move out. I don't need a tenant and was only doing it as a favor. Sally's mom was begging me not to kick her out. She said that she didn't even know what our moms were up to until the alarm went off. My mom is pissed that I wasn't available immediately to get them out of trouble and she's furious that I won't give her back my key. She thinks I did it on purpose. I'm not sure how she thinks I forced her to break into my home without permission. So now I'm the a-hole for making them sweat until they got a hold of me and taking my key back since I can't trust her now? I don't know. Am I in the wrong? Am I the asshole for not letting a girl dressed as a slutty elf who ended up at my house borrow some sweats after she was uncomfortable and cold? Not sure where to begin with this. I guess last night, one of the more popular frats on campus was having a Christmas on the beach theme party. So all around the bar area was girls dressed in bikinis with vague Christmas themes. My roommate is dating a total nut job named Sydney. As far as I know, they had broken up. Well, at like 2 a.m., he bombs through the door with Sydney and her friend in tow, both dressed like slutty elves with way too much skin showing. My roommate and Sydney went to his room and still hadn't come out. I was playing Fortnite and the other girl said she was the designated driver and was stuck. And would I mind if she charged her phone and hung out while she knew what Sydney was doing? And I said, fine. Maybe 15 minutes later, she said something like, I know this is weird for both of us, but I'm not here by choice. I just don't want to bail on my friend. But sitting here with a guy I don't really know in a bikini is weird and I'm cold. Do you have some sweats I can borrow? I see you every Monday and Wednesday and I promise I'll give them back. 
I told her no, I wasn't comfortable with that. She asked if I at least had a blanket. I found one in my roommate's spare room, but it was really small, and said I was sorry, it's the best I could do. She fell asleep on the couch and went to bed. My older sister came to pick me up for breakfast and saw the girl sleeping on the couch and asked why a half-naked girl is sleeping under a baby blanket. In the car, I told her what happened, and she basically got mad at me, saying I had about 30 opportunities to be a really decent guy, and I blew it. She said it sounds like the girl was trying to do the right thing by her friend, and I could have at least lent her some sweats. I could have let her sleep in my bed while I took the couch. I could have said that she should go home, and I drive Sydney home. But basically, I was an asshole because I left an apparently nice girl in a vulnerable position, and I didn't even care. She said that I need to grow up if I want to have friends and have some empathy if I ever want girls to like me. She had no idea if this girl was into me or not, but I missed a great practice round of treating someone a nice way that they may reciprocate. When we got back to my house, my roommate, Sydney, and the girl were gone. There was a sticky note on the door that said, Thank you for letting me stay here. Sorry it was weird. Please say hello sometime. Nat. My sister said this was even more proof that I acted like an antisocial weirdo and she was just being nice. And the reason I never had a girlfriend is the way I acted last night. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for making the neighbor's kid fail his exam? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, 26 female, live in a condo-style complex. A lot of people have suffered due to a global event and people in this condo have gone out of their way to help those less fortunate, myself included. My neighbor and her husband both had their income reduced. She was laid off and he got reduced hours. When they asked to borrow my Wi-Fi password, I also gave them all my online streaming passwords to be kind as she wouldn't be doing much else besides looking for a new job and doing some housework. That was over two years ago. I don't interact with them or other neighbors in a day-to-day -day as I work a lot and I'm a private person. Last Thursday, when I tried to log on, I saw that attempts have been made to change my streaming and Wi-Fi password and I spent hours on customer service line trying to get it fixed. The system locks you out after three attempts of changing a password. When it detects you are not the admin of your account, I got new ones. Saturday morning, I was woken up by what I thought was someone kicking my door in. Am I the asshole for making the neighbor's kid fail his exam? Disclaimer, this is not my story. Saturday morning, I was woken up by what I thought was someone kicking my door in. With a bat in my hand, I checked through the spy hole and it was my neighbor and her husband. They were angry that I had kicked them off their network. Their son was taking an online exam, but the school informed them that I wasn't registered as while he was doing the exam, I had changed the password and he didn't notice. He got an incomplete grade and has to redo these three months in another exam in the summer. I told him I was unaware that they were on my network still as she has gotten a part-time job. Therefore, I didn't feel the need to check with them to make changes to my account after a hacking attempt. To this, her husband said they tried to change the password. They said I'm away five to six days a week working and his wife wanted to give online streaming passwords to our new co-workers and there can only be two guests on my account. They wanted them to have it so they could discuss their favorite shows. They expect me to pay for the exam their son has to retake and summer schooling. So am I the asshole? Am I wrong for telling my mother-in-law that if she expects me to get a DNA test for my son, I want her to get one for my husband? Damn! I'm just kidding. I, 30 female, and my husband, Stephen, 32, have been happily married for five years and now have a four-year-old son. I met my mother-in-law at his uncle's funeral, and before I met her, his cousin said she wasn't the nicest person and had impossibly high standards. Of course, I asked my husband, and he agreed that mother-in-law can be quite judgmental, but not to worry and that he'd be there for me. I felt like they gave me the sugar-coated version because she was terrible. She made a scene about bringing a stranger to a family funeral, but my husband cut her off and said his aunt, who was his uncle's widow, said he could. She spent the rest of the funeral giving me nasty looks and making passive-aggressive comments. She even made a scene at our wedding, but that's a different story. When my husband told her I was pregnant, she surprised us both and was very excited to be a grandmother. Her attitude was great until she said she wanted to see my son being born, but I refused, but she did apologize. And when she first held him, she looked at me and said he was beautiful, but I went to the kitchen to get us a drink and then I could hear my husband telling her to get out. She started yelling that he needed to get the baby tested because he doesn't look like anybody in their family. After she left, she took it to social media and told everybody that I cheated on my husband and my husband needs to get a DNA test. So I made my own post and said I'll get a test when she gets a test for her son, and that made everything worse. She rang my husband up telling him to take it down, but he just hung up on her. But everybody's divided and questioning my husband's paternity since she has such a strong reaction to it. 
Now my husband's wondering if I went too far. Am I the asshole for telling my family their comments about my son's name are not making me regret the name, but instead are making me regret them? Hmm, okay. Interesting. My husband and I welcomed our son into the world in November. We chose the name Reed, R-E-I-D, for him after some searching. Neither of us got our, fir uh, got our first choices, but we love the name and it fits our son beautifully, oh. we believe. I know my son's name is a bit of a standout among my family. They like to reuse the same names that are popular and always seem to float pretty high in naming charts. Mm. For boys, the top three in our family are James, Benjamin, and William. Okay. Good Christian names. Good Christian God-given names. But Reed isn't a weird or unheard of name. No. My family were all very quiet when we announced the name, and almost immediately they started dropping comments about, quote-unquote, people making weird naming choices for their children. Oh my fucking God. Why does everyone do this? <laughs> I don't know. Why? Okay, why is it? Are, is this just like, is this wedding and baby making season? Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, because it's definitely... I think genuinely it's just these are moments where people decide to make it about themselves. You know what I mean? That is fair. That is, yeah. Any fucking way possible, people need attention, and they need yeah, to make just... it a... I need drama. I need to have drama. And it's yeah. going to be about as little as, like... Your fucking baby's name that's not even mine. Yeah. She's fucking wild. Chill out. Chill TF out. People making weird naming choices for their children, which never directly mentioned my husband and me, but we both felt it was aimed at us. Yeah. Then they commented a few times how there's nothing wrong with good, solid, classic names uh, that everyone knows and loves and reuses. Oh, yeah. What do you think of the fucking urinal piece in the art room while we're at it? Yeah, fucking right. classical piece of shit. Oh, you think it's a piece of shit? What do you think about Rothko? Oh, oh it's so I could paint too. that. Oh, oh, you've never seen it. You've never seen it, yeah. Yeah, okay. You fuck you. <laughs> but then they started to say Reed was an odd choice, or that they had no idea where we found such Not a name. Not an odd choice. Even though it's in the top 400 choices. My parents accused me of trying to be trendy and not thinking about my son's future. What the fuck do you mean trendy? Not thinking about my son's future. What? Oh, you have the name Reed? Resume gone in the trash. That's not... This is something that goes over my head so hard, dude. Yeah. Re realistically, like it, it, uh, an insane amount because I don't n understand why anyone is like... Be normal. If yeah. you don't be normal, you're gonna die. You're gonna die, yeah. Because I'm fat and autistic, and I've been this way my whole life, and I've never gotten the chance to fit in. Yeah. And I'm living, but I guess my life is hell to other people. I guess, yeah. I fucking... guess. I'm, I'm having a great time. Yeah, but <laughs> God, no, it's not good. You're not no, normal. You can't. You just gotta be normal. He's gotta be oh, normal, Sarah. Be normal Sarah. Or else hey, he's gonna Sarah, go, oh. Sarah, you and your successful Reddit podcast, how about you stop doing that and just go work, uh... Not even that. I garden. I yeah. crochet. I have a great time. Well, you should stop doing all those things. I guess I should be miserable, yeah, based on actually, what yeah. all the neurotypicals... Yeah, you should actually be miserable. Think. You would actually really enjoy going into the, the office 9 to 5. <laughs> actually, let's move out to the suburbs real quick, too. Let's get out of central Orlando Two point and... Five kids. Yeah, have two and a half kids. Yeah. Have a third kid, chop them up in half. <laughs> two and a half kids. I decided to confront my family about without my husband present because I felt like it wasn't fair to drag him into it more. Fair. I asked them what their problem was and why they were being so mean about the name. They told me they hated Reed and they felt it was a very unattractive name and we did not think it through at all. Why do you want to... That baby is not gonna fuck. <laughs> yeah, why do you want to fuck that baby? Wait. Why, are you, why do you... Why is that name unattractive? That baby with Reed... <laughs> He is not fucking. Yeah, I'm not trying to sexualize my own baby, yeah. you fucking freak. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm joking completely. No, I know. Um, They told me that we should have reconsidered and given him a real name, not something trendy that came up in the last 20 to 30 years. This is a lot of mental gymnastics to go around like, that name is not in the Bible. Yeah, you just say that. It's not in the Bible. Can you stop fucking hiding behind such coded fucking language and just say what you mean, you fascist? Like, come on. But you're so right. They're like, I need him to be named Jebediah. I need Jebediah. <laughs> like, what do you want? That's yeah, not, like, that's you, not a weird fucking name. Yeah, if I saw someone, yeah. Oh, Jeb? Dude. Yeah, you want, okay, no, hold on real quick. After 2016, you want to name you your fucking name kid your, Jeb? Jeb? Jeb, exclamation point. Constantly asking people to please clap. Yeah, you're asking for a fucking subby little piece of shit. A subby? Yeah. Aw. <laughs> fucking... A little Jeb is a yeah, sub. Yeah, yeah. Jeb Bush is a sub, Do you everyone. want a fucking pushover for the rest of your goddamn <laughs> life? 
Give him a regular fucking name. Also, if you think Reed isn't gonna fuck, you have Reed's not watched fuck, yeah. Criminal Mind. Yeah. Everyone wants to fuck that guy. Yeah. They said we had so many beautiful names to choose from, and we made a horrible decision. Then they said that they had tried to gently show us the light, but we ignored their efforts. Show us the light. Yeah, sure. I told them if their comments about my son's name were supposed to make me regret the choice, then they failed, because all it did was make me regret them, because they were being rude and hurtful. Yeah. Now, what do you think the family's reaction was to that? Fuck you. Was it, you know what, you're so right? Or is it- You're being unreasonable here, come on. My family did not take my comment well and told me I was being rude and I was behaving like a child. Wow. Who can't accept the truth. It's everyone's else's fault but mine. Am I the asshole? No, That's you're not the prime asshole. That's some projecting right there. Am I the asshole for taking potatoes off of a guy's plate at a wedding? I just got back from my friend's wedding in Mexico. It was at a fancy all-inclusive. Everyone mostly did their own thing with only a few group events planned, other than the wedding and reception, obviously. One of the group activities was dinner out at one of the restaurants that required a reservation. It was beautiful and the service was fantastic. One hiccup. The best man did not want potatoes. He wasn't allergic. Potatoes did not take out his parents in a dark alley. And he wasn't sworn to avenge them, as far as I know, anyways. What is the story? We got a comedian. Okay. I speak Spanish, and after he asked me, I asked the waiter to please not serve him potatoes. Well, you know where this is going. He was maliciously served potatoes, and he would not shut up about it. He pointed out to everyone at our table that he had been served a starchy tuber against his will. Other tables were watching him and listening to him, getting upset about the potatoes. He ate the rest of his meal, but would not drop the potatoes. I couldn't take it anymore. I reached over and grabbed the potatoes with my hand and put them on my plate. And then I ate them. I would have done that too. Same. He just sat there stunned. Then he got up and went to his suite. He avoided me the rest of the time there, but he made sure to tell everyone what an asshole I was and how unladylike my behavior was. Ew. Leave him. Bye. I just wanted him to shut the fuck up about the potatoes. Little bitch. My friend wants me to apologize for causing drama. Am I the asshole? No. Who hates potatoes this much? Am I wrong when my coworker asked me to bake for her Valentine's Day, but was shocked when I asked her to pay for the ingredients? As a hobby and out of kindness to my coworkers, friends, and family, I really enjoy baking and sharing with people. I bake for them pretty regularly. I like to have my homemade baked goods, so when I'm feeling like I want something, it's very easy to make a full batch. So I bake big batches, keep a few for myself, and then bring the bulk into work to share with my coworkers. Not to toot my horn, but I am good at baking. My coworkers are always so grateful and happy when I bring something in, and in these instances where I choose to bring things in, I've never asked anybody to pay for anything. But many of my friends and coworkers have also asked me to bake for them, for themselves, or for events outside of work. I always tell people I'm happy to as long as they do cover the cost of ingredients. And I don't charge extra for my time, labor, or effort. And my take on it is very simple. Am I wrong when my coworker asked me to bake for her Valentine's Day and was shocked when I asked her to pay for the ingredients? So one of my coworkers wanted me to bake muffins for her girls only Galentine's Valentine's Day brunch. I told her sure what kind. She said mini muffins, chocolate ones, and blueberries. I tell her, okay, you can either buy the ingredients and bring them to me, or I can calculate how much it will cost, and you can pay me that way. She seemed absolutely stunned and reluctantly said, yeah, that's fine. She couldn't believe that I would charge her and even went as far as to complain to others in the office. No concern for my time, my willingness to do it for her and not making any profit, but so put off that I asked for this, $10, 10 US dollars. For 40 mini muffins, two different flavors made from scratch with higher quality and more expensive ingredients. It just tastes so much better and that's what she wanted. So am I wrong? Story time, my stepkid recently told me that they're in love with me and I started having intrusive thoughts. This is not on my story. I'm a 34-year-old guy. My wife is 41. 
and my stepdaughter is 20 years old. Non-biological female. We'll call them K for the purpose of this post. I've been around for six years. My relationship with K has developed over the years to the point where we're very close. We talk about nearly everything, drawing the line at intimate experiences and generally spend a lot of time together as my wife is often traveling for work. In my mind, we are very close friends. I'm a little too young to be a father figure to them and never took on that role. My wife had a blow up the other day. Actually, she has them a lot of days. They are usually targeted at K for being lazy and having no direction, even though she has a job and goes to school. Basically, she wants to push them out of the house because she didn't have it easy early on. So why should they? Sometimes I'm the target because I let Kay financially abuse me just because I support her. Basically, she doesn't like that her kids identifies as anything other than just a woman. I don't subscribe to that way of thinking and it's my house. Kay is free to stay here as long as they like. It could literally be forever and I wouldn't care. I make way more enough money to ensure this isn't an issue. And my wife doesn't have to work either. She chooses to. My wife has been getting irritated because Kay is still around. It's all she talks about. If she's on the other side of the country for work, her main priority is whether or not Kay paid rent, which they do by their own choice, or is doing chores, etc. It's incredibly frustrating for both Kay and I. I've been questioning my relationship with my wife because of this behavior for months. Jump to Tuesday, this week Kay asked if we can have a serious talk. And of course, I said yes. They told me that they're very appreciative of how I handle their mom and that they're sorry it's too much stress. Go to part two. Story time, my stepkid recently told me that they're in love with me and I started having intrusive thoughts. Part two. This is not my story. My stepdaughter was telling me how she appreciates me for letting her be in my house. She also thanked me for having her mental health, success, and safety in my priorities. She said she loved me. This isn't uncommon at all. I replied that I love her too. She said no, it's not like the parent and child or the close friend kind of love. She said, I think I'm in love with you and I'm not sure how to feel about it. The conversation ended up bad. That was five days ago. Since then, I've been having all kinds of thoughts romantic, intimate, and disgust because I'm having those type of thoughts about someone I helped raise, thoughts about leaving my wife. To be fair, I was thinking about that before, etc. On top of that, I've been having extreme vivid dreams. I'm just not sure what I'm supposed to do. I kind of want to go for it, but it's obviously very socially unaccepted and I'd probably face accusations of being a creep. I have never done anything unsavory to her, nor have I ever tried to isolate or control her in any way. I know it's wrong, and while I usually try to do the right thing, I find that I really don't care about the moral implications here. I don't know why. She's already on the verge of not having a relationship with her mother. The only reason they communicate is because they live in the same house. I realize this will probably get me eaten alive by Reddit and probably anyone but actual therapists. But I'm extremely unsure of myself in an uncomfortable situation, and I have no one to vent to. Quick edit, I should also mention that Kay confirmed these feelings to me a few times after the conversation. Sorry for making things awkward. I can't help how I feel, but I shouldn't have said anything. It wasn't just a misstep. A couple more things. I've already called a divorce lawyer and my therapy appointment. I'm going out of town to clear my head. I'm gonna give a chance with my stepdaughter. I, 32F, used to shop at the absolute best thrift store. They were pushed out due to a rent hike and replaced by a new shop that passes themselves off as the same concept. For a moment, I thought the area had actually managed to avoid further gentrification until I looked at the price tag on a coat on the nearest rack. $999. What? That ain't no thrift. Semi-damaged items were marked down, but good or 
perfect condition. Full, outrageous price. I was so angry at this store for duping the locals into thinking they might have a worthy replacement for the last shop that I calmly continued perusing aisle by aisle and letting little silent but deadlies out as I weaved my way from the back of the store to the front. AITA? It's funny, but like, I guess I would say I don't really think this is very effective. I don't really think anyone was harmed, but I think, yeah, I I think, think it's leave for- a review. 